What was that? I don't know. Okay, so let me answer the number one question that we get asked. What equipment do you use in your photo booth? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we're normally working on this 1956 Calcraft renovation, but uh, this is actually one of the busiest weeks of the year for our business. I'm not really gonna have any time to do much work on that. So for those of you that don't know, um, my day job is with our business, Lamp House Photo Company, and we rent out photo booths. One of them of which is a camper photo booth. So I thought I would answer some of the common questions that we get asked about that and talk a little bit about what it takes to run a business with a photo booth camper. But it starts with cleaning up the camper, getting it ready to go. Okay, little tour real quick. This is the camper on the inside. Here's our tower where our photo booth equipment goes. Here's the arm attached to the wall where our light goes. Back here is the power outlet where we plug our printer and router and stuff into. Here's our climate control system. I don't have a uh, fantastic fan in this one, but that's always been a modification I've been planning. There's the bench where people sit. Right now it's got a couple tables and the jack stand sitting on it. Those all go on the floor when we travel. And here's the bar that we hang our backdrop from. So you get the gist. A question I just got asked last night was how have the floors held up in here? And honestly, they haven't held up too well. You can see where they've started to kind of shrink and pull away from one another. They're not cupping real bad because these were a little higher grade peel and stick. Yeah, these aren't really designed for this and I wouldn't use these again. Um, but they've held up okay for four, four years now and they're cheap enough. So as you can tell, sometimes there's some very tight requirements for where you might need to park a camper. Though the dolly's great for that, and that's another reason why you want to, you know, when you're considering what kind of camper you're going to get, I would make sure it's a lightweight one. All right, so uh, my next step is, of course, to put it up on jack stands and uh, make sure it's reasonably level. Jack stands under there, and then we move on to setting it up on the inside. So let me say a little something about owning a photo booth company. The, the camper accounts for about 20% of our events in a good year. We have three other indoor booths that account for the majority of our business. If you're planning on doing a photo booth camper and you don't already have an established photo booth business, uh, you might consider whether you want this to be your full-time job or just a side gig, a part-time kind of thing, just, just once a week because just having one photo booth is difficult to really make a living with. The way you turn this into a real business is you scale it up, you have employees that can take a booth out and set it up. I, I have great employees, but I still don't uh, make them <laughs> go out and set up this weird thing. I just let them deal with the uh, you know simpler, normal indoor booths. Okay, so let me answer the number one question that we get asked. What equipment do you use in your photo booth? This is all the secrets, right? So, we run on Microsoft Surface Pro. They're nice, they're consistent, they're reliable. Hardly ever have any trouble with them. iPad that handles uh, sharing and uh, printing extras and things like that. We've used a variety of cameras over the years from Canon DSLRs to Canon mirrorlesses, but we've settled on the Canon M50. It's a very small compact camera, fits in the booths well, and uh, they're pretty affordable. Uh, they've got a new version of this one out now. 
We've always used Paul C. Buff lighting products. This is a Alien B B1600, which is a really powerful strobe, but occasionally in the camper we need a lot of power to knock out the sun. So hardly ever use these indoors, though. So they're they're overkill for that. We use a Paul C. Buff beauty dish on that strobe and the printer. I'll have to show you in the back because the printer is actually really heavy. All right, this is it right here. The DNP DS40. These are discontinued. You can still buy them refurbished. They are in high, high demand this year, 2021, because the paper for the printers that replace them are made overseas and are stuck in shipping limbo. A lot of people have snatched up these DS40s. Paper for those are made here in the United States and are plentiful, but so many people are uh, demanding it now that there have been some delays on that as well. But this is the printer we've always used. We have several of them. Uh, you know, it's nice to be standardized around one printer because then you only have to buy one media type and you're good to go. These are good. They're quick. They just print, print, print. Print quality is pretty nice. They don't, however, like sunlight, so I don't usually set them outside. Uh, and in the camper, like right here, I have some sun coming in. I'll probably set it over here on this side so it's not sitting in the sun. So that's the equipment. Uh, there's nothing that fancy about any of it. Pro, the software that we've always run, has been DSLR booth, and it works pretty well. I've always been relatively happy with it. Though, so, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You know, our camper photo booth has a little tower that most of the equipment goes into that I built myself, but, you know, certainly if um, you have a photo booth already, you can figure out a way to mount it inside of a camper that will work also. My advice is to make sure it's secured to the floor because people will bump it, push it back, and then your framing is going to be all out of whack. All right, so I'm going to get all my equipment put together and in place and uh, get this ready to test out. What was that? I don't know. In the highest room of the tallest tower, one of the first things I like to do is find a power outlet because there have been on more than one occasion a time when I had to move the camper after I'd already gotten in location because I didn't check how far away the power connection was. Here, I know I've got plenty of cords, so I'm not worried about that, but I'm still gonna do it first thing. So one other thing that's sometimes a problem, and I don't know if you can tell, but with the jack stands down, we're not exactly level yet. So uh, I always use a uh, scissor jack to kind of figure that out. You can tell from when you're in the camper which, which ones need to be adjusted. And so it rocks back and forth this direction, so it's either the one in the front there or the one back over there in that corner. Okay, I can see right here, it's this one. There's about this much of a gap between it and the frame, so... I think what I'll do is I'll just um, lift this up a little bit, raise this up one, and then drop it back down on it, and I bet it'll set fine. Should be good. Nice and stable now. You know, that's usually not a real problem if you're on uh, pavement, like la last night when I set up. But you know, sometimes in parking lots you wind up with kind of different kind of slopes. It's just something to be aware of. And uh, you know, I always carry the scissor jack just for that purpose. We also always use a gray card to set a white balance. Uh, you can use a white surface, but I find gray cards a little easier to work with. And then, of course, once you've got it all set, you need to test it out. I think it's always a good idea to have a sign on your door that tells people what time you're operating for and what the rules are, if there are any. We try to keep things pretty simple. Six butts, because more than that, pictures just aren't as good. Plus, also, the more people you cram in these, the more likely things are going to get broken. That's also the reason for the no drinks inside. Build drink ruins everyone's fun. But, you know, we always try to be pretty tolerant of people, having fun. Uh, you know, we don't try to be too big of sticklers, but
but uh, you know, it's good to set some ground rules. So in our stories the other day, Catherine asked uh, what you'd like to know about owning a camper photo booth. So we thought we'd take a minute in rapid fire style to answer those questions. So one question we got was, how did you get your first client for your photo booth? You know, we, we were already an established company by the time we were using this photo booth. So we had a returning client that actually had seen that we were working on this and she thought it was great, so she booked us for a corporate event. We, we had one of the rounds of the NCAA here in Wichita and we volunteered to have it out for a couple of days for that. And there were, I don't know, 14,000 people or 15 or something. A lot of people came to that event and really put it through its paces. So uh, I don't recommend doing events like that to start with because you're gonna find out what works and what doesn't real fast that way. Another question we got is uh, maybe a little more business related, but are you an LLC and what type of insurance do you have? We are an LLC. We are a, it's what they call a single member LLC. So it's basically like a sole proprietorship, but with some of the protections of an LLC. For insurance, we have a great big liability plan um, to cover us from anything. Uh, you know, the thing about insurance, the difference between a small plan and a big plan is usually not very much on your monthly premium. So I definitely recommend having more insurance than you need. It's never going to hurt if you need it. And actually some of our corporate clients require a pretty large liability uh, coverage. So, you know, there's that to keep in mind. Another question, uh, pricing gear inside. What does the contract you use look like? Pricing is highly dependent on your market, where you are, what your competitors are charging. So you have to do a little research and figure that out on your own. We've always aimed for the higher end of our local market. And I suggest if you're gonna compete, you know, if you have other competitors, look at who is doing the best job in your area and try to do a better job. Don't try to offer a cheaper product. Try to offer a better product and then charge accordingly for it. Gear, I think uh, Catherine's already shown what kind of gear we use. That's just the equipment that we've found works well for us. That's maybe a more important part than what gear do you have. Do you know how to use it? Do you know how to troubleshoot it? Because things will go wrong. And if you aren't comfortable digging into a Windows computer or you don't you know, know much about basic photography, uh, to operate the camera, you know, you might want to uh, work on those skills and prepare yourself. How do you put the backdrop up? Where do you get your backdrops? One backdrop option or many? You know, it helps to have many options, but it helps to have many good options. Uh, so, you know, it's nice to have a lot of fun backdrops, but you know, if you have any backdrops that don't take a good photo, don't look nice in a photo, I guess is what I should say. I suggest just getting rid of them. They're not worth, they're not worth having. They're not worth promoting to people. So be confident in the backgrounds that you choose to offer. For the camper, we just have a piece of heavy conduit, and I always recommend conduit over, say, uh, using a wooden rod, because wooden rods can break when people fall into them. From personal experience. So we, we just use a piece of conduit that goes into a couple of um, sort of cups on the walls. We sew a uh, pocket into the top of our backdrops and another pocket into the bottom. Run a rod through down there to just weight it down. Uh, there's also some eyelets on the walls if we need to attach a bungee to uh, the sides to kind of pull it taut. It kind of helps to avoid any wrinkles and things like that. Society 6 is a great place to look for different designs that you have printed on all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, try to find something that's gonna be the same width of your camper so you don't have a lot of wall showing on either side. So I hope you enjoyed this little look at what it takes to run and set up and operate a camper photo booth. It's been our full-time job for the last several years. I know we get a lot of questions about it, so I'm always happy to answer questions. If there's anything else you'd like to know about camper photo booths, uh, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. As always, new videos come out every Sunday, so make sure and like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.